my name is Claire E. Potter and I'm a poet and performer and today I'd like to share some ideas with you to help you get started writing a poem for the Poetry Wales Poetry Competition whose theme is Empathy. So, what is empathy and how is it different to sympathy? Well, broadly speaking, sympathy is when we feel sorry for someone, when we think, oh, that's a shame for them, or I bet that was horrible. It's kind of a distanced, detached feeling. Whereas with empathy, we can recognise someone else's feelings or their situation, and we can relate. We can imagine what it's like from the inside. We can feel the same feelings. Now, we don't have to like or approve of the person or thing that we're empathising with, but we do need to connect and come to understand another person or an animal or an object a little better. Walt Whitman, the American poet, said, I do not ask the wounded person how he feels. I myself become the wounded person. Now, I think poets always do this anyway. We're always empathising. You know, we tend to go under the bark of the tree. We think about the feather on the wing of the bird. If we didn't do this, if we didn't truly deeply empathise, then our poems wouldn't be powerful enough to move our readers to also have that a similar level of empathy. So that's what we're aiming to do on this journey of writing a poem about empathy or writing a poem where we are empathising, is to really get into another person's or place or thing's perspective and then do some word magic so that our poems in turn inspire others to step inside the experience. So where to begin? Well, all good poems begin with not knowing, with curiosity, with wonder. I wonder what it was like to be Stephen Hawking, to be a neuron in a brain. I wonder what it's like to be a shooting star. So what could you write a poem about? Imagine you are someone or something else for a moment. You could be an explorer, an inventor, a dog by the river. You could be a saucepan on the stove, a boarded up house or an ocean wave, a shell or a stone. You could be the weather, a rain cloud, a tornado, an umbrella, a hill or a cave, a bat hanging upside down in the dark, a ball thrown or kicked or lost in the park. You could be a painting on the wall, the face unchanging, but what for hundreds of years has that face been seeing and thinking? You could be a celebrity or a bully you hate, someone you wish you could see. You could be a holy sock, a key, a tick of the clock. You could be a statue, a riot, a virus. You could be the protest. You could be the silence. So my advice is to go where your wonder is. What are you interested in? What catches your eye when you look outside the window in the classroom, on the bus on the way home, in your bedroom? Who or what do you want to get to know better? To imagine what it might feel like to be them, to see through their eyes. Maybe it's a, a family member or, or a ghost or a football player or the elderly lady who leans on a gate every day. You could look at the news and take a story and slip inside another world. Imagine what it must be like to be a, 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 an asylum seeker on a rubber dinghy in the high seas trying to escape war or poverty. Or you could go to nature. What must it be like to be the cuckoo that comes here from the Congo, to have that amount of courage to fly and, and, the, and the confidence and nowhere to rest? Take a leap. Is there an object in your house that's always been of interest to you? It could be an old suitcase. Where's it been? Where's it going to go? What's inside of it? Or is there a family heirloom? Has something already come into your head? Then write it down. So now you have your subject. Slow down and pay attention. Do research if you can. So for instance, if you're writing about the last eagle in Wales that sadly died recently, you know, go on the internet, get some books, look, look at photos or videos of, of, of eagles. Learn what it means to be eagle. Um, perhaps thinking of interview questions might help so that if you are, I don't know, thinking about that painting, ask some questions of your person, place or thing and imagine the answers and those answers will give you more questions. And follow your instinct with language. 
You can write in the way you speak. That's how I write my poetry because what you're looking for is your truth, your way of telling your, your, your experience. It's your poem. And then when you put your images together, cut out words that don't do their work and listen to the word music. There's a music to poetry. And if you speak out loud what, you've, what you're writing, you hear it and follow that and trust that. And describe so we can feel and see and be too. So perhaps your poem will be a question, a list of questions. Perhaps you'll write from first person perspective, I. But you don't have to. There are no rules. Rhyme, no rhyme, acrostic, it's up to you. So think though how the poem looks on the page, the space it takes up. Because line breaks, because white space will allow the reader some time to think too. And lastly, consider what the Welsh poet R.S. Thomas called the deeper note. So that you're not just writing a poem describing something, you're taking it that step deeper. You're reflecting on what you've learned from seeing and feeling and being in another's perspective. And what is that lasting thought or question or idea you want to give the reader? So, number one, Find your subject by following your wonder, your curiosity. Two, do a little bit of research. You know, either real on the internet and in books or imagined asking questions and imagining what you would get back. Three, pay attention to the sounds of the words in your ideas. They will lead the way. And four, what do you come to know from being in someone else's shoes? Henry David Thoreau said, could a greater miracle take place than for us to look through each other's eyes for an instant? I look forward to looking through yours. Good luck.